بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Assalamu alaikum dear viewers welcome to special Eid program I call expectation of Eid Eid expectation my name is Sakuddin and on my right we have our amazing Naz from Birmingham it's how was your Eid today sir alhamdulillah it's, it's been very good I spent it with the family and yeah thank you for giving us time today thank and uh, we have Shahan Eid Assalamu alaikum, Eid Mubarak. MashaAllah. Shahan, where are you from? You're from Sudbury, aren't you? I'm from Sudbury, yes. Oh, thank you for making time for us today. On my left, I'll go to our sister and Sadia. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum How is your Eid today? It's been very good. Fantastic. Mazhar? Assalamu alaikum, uh, Eid Mubarak, everyone. Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's been quite enjoyable today. Fantastic. You know that our show today called um, Expectation of Eid. What do we expect from my age group and your group? So today um, we're going to talk about what we're thinking about and what are the realities and is that possible to have it? So if I come to Naz, what's your expectation of it today? Expectations to just enjoy the, the celebration and you know spend it with friends and family and yeah, just enjoy the day. In, if I ask you what kind of expression in food, what would, what would you say? I eat anything to be honest. Sir. Oh. Asian food or, yeah. Like Handesh? Handesh, yeah. I and um, I know Mazza was talking about Shutki, but I'm no, sure in the I, I day you will not get that, would that, you? No. Okay, so what are you expecting from your family? What are you expecting from they to provide for you today? You know what? I, I are you going anywhere? Yeah. Are you planning anything? Uh, like yeah, we usually uh, spend the day in Birmingham and then later on we, we go to London, visit the, the rest of the family, and yeah, that's it really. Fantastic. Young man, you know, you're really talented. You've recently done your GCSE, but you're only 15. Um, yeah. Tell us about it. Uh, so, recently, before the summer, we did our coursework for physics, biology, and chemistry. That makes up 25% of our overall grade, and I've got three A stars across the three subjects. Amazing, amazing. I'm sure your parents were really happy about it. What yeah. did you get in due time? Uh, well, my did they take you anywhere? Did they give you anything special? Did they give you a gift? They treat me out for a meal in London. Oh, day out in London. Fantastic. Okay, for today's the Eid day. So, what is your expectation from them? What are you expecting from your parents or your family or your neighbours? What is expectation? Well, go out with family, go meet relatives. We haven't met like a stress-free day for all of us. Fantastic. Do you have any particular idea about dresses? Do they have? Do you have to? Um, do they make you wear some kind of dress you don't like, or you like what they ask you to wear? They don't make me wear anything specific. Oh. I choose what I want to wear on Eid day. What do you normally wear? Uh, casual clothes, jeans, shirts. Nah. I'm assuming you're, you live in an area where Sudbury is th don't have many Muslims in the area. Probably. No, there's not many Muslims. So you don't see many people wearing no. with tube, no. uh, uh, silver kameez. I mean, yeah, you don't have that. No. Uh, on my left, I'll go back to Sadia. Sadia, I know a um, lot of young ladies we see, they wear lovely, lovely clothes love lovely dresses. Do you have any particular dress you like or you expected or you want people to wear? Um, I prefer keeping it simple and comfortable so I like wearing um, a bias as opposed to really showy and uncomfortable outfits. Right. Do all your friends wear the same dress? Um, well I have lots of Muslim friends from different cultures so they'll wear um, clothes that are particular to their own cultures. How about your family? What do they wear normally wear? Your um, sisters, the mothers, or anybody in that level? Do they wear similar or they do wear different? It depends on their preferences, really. Some of them like wearing um, Asian outfits, and some of them like wearing a bias. Have you ever tried the Asian one? Uh, yeah, when I was younger, I used to mostly wear Asian clothes. Comfortable? Not comfortable? Not comfortable. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's good. Masa, how about yourself? Dress code, tell me about your dress. Um, Particularly, you don't wear, I'm assuming, the long tube and everything. No, I wear casual clothing, but I'm really picky when it comes to Eid clothes. Like, you don't want something that's too extravagant, but you don't want something that's too simple. And yeah, like taking my time, like two weeks in advance I go shopping. Then I like, take my time, take, choose all my options. But yeah, usually it's just jeans and a shirt. Do, do, you, do you have to demand your parents to give you this, this, this and that? 
So they usually they know your ideas and they get it for you. Not really. Mostly it's just my dad asking me, "Do you want this? Do you want that?" And me being me, I'll say no to most of the things and then just end up taking one of them anyway. Yeah. Well, you know, like if you said you wanna buy stuff for your parents, what would you buy for them? Well, if it was Imagine for what kind of stuff you like. If you were there to wear, what would you choose for them? For my dad, yeah. I'd buy a shirt, possibly a fancy blazer. Uh, jeans and nice shoes. He wears them anyway. He wears the, the, yeah. the thing you describe. He wears them. But what would you be yeah. different? What would you? I mean, he's like getting he old, man. Come on, he's getting <laughs> old, isn't he? So, nah, his his wardrobe's like, it's yeah, he's a wide variety of clothing. So he wears everything. So nothing really unique that you can pick out for him. Okay, you know, like you know, eat days. Normally, you know, eat days we don't have normal food. It's yeah. always a special food for us, and you know sometimes take all night to prepare them. Honestly, yeah. they they do put a lot of effort. They put a lot of time, especially our parents, and um, they expect us to at least taste them. You know that's it's, it's, it's desirable and that's normal. But sometimes we say in the f oh, I don't like that. I don't like this. I don't like. Do you think it sounds good when especially um, the woman side of the food that they you know takes all night to do? It. I'm sure you've seen it. Your parents do it too. Um, how do you feel? Uh, do you take it? You don't like it, but you still have it. Well, personally, I really like samosas and um, the f like Bangladeshi food. I think cultural preservation is really important because we belong to a really beautiful culture. But um, it's not wrong to incorporate some modern twists to it. So normally in my family, we have samosas, we have handesh, but then at the same time, we have... Um, eat cakes and other finger foods. Do you make eat cakes or do you buy them from outside? Oh, we usually order them. You order them. Okay, Is that e that's the easier option. I'm me see. Okay. Um, in Birmingham, what do they do? Birmingham, yes. so... Last year, I know you guys had um, 90,000 people 90, prayed in the park. Man. It's yeah. massive. We don't get that big number in the Muslim countries sometimes, you know, it's, yeah. it's difficult. Um, tell me about it, please. Yeah, it was a very special feeling, uh, you know, for the whole community to come together and celebrate the, the special occasion. And yeah, um, very good day. Do you, d uh, I'm sure you met a lot of them. Are they people from outside uh, Birmingham or are all of them from Birmingham? A lot of them are from Birmingham and you do have um, a few people, you know, from outside of Birmingham. Wow. Did you provide any food for them? Any, was there any food around or just pray and go? Yeah, there was like um, stalls where people were selling food and yeah, that's it really. I think we could do that here as well, isn't it? We could do that because it's nice to go where you take your, your kids with you, your wives with you sometimes. Did you have women's day? Yeah, uh, so it's segregated. So. Wow, that's great man, that's great. It's a family day out. Yeah. So you pray with 90,000 Muslims and then also you got food day. You got st that's, that's amazing, honestly, we could do that. Have you been into any of them, uh, um, the big gathering of prayers, Eid prayers? Uh, I haven't been to any big gatherings here, but when I was in Bangladesh, there was a massive amount of people who would pray in the mosque and outside. There was a lot of people that would come together for Eid Salah. How, what was your experience in Bangladesh? Um, uh, that's, that's interesting for me. Uh, well, majority of people were Muslim, so a big community together, come together and pray, and it was really nice. What did you do different from here, what you would do normally? Well, here's a small community of Muslims, but over there, we all prayed outside, and the atmosphere there was much better, more calm and everything. You enjoyed it, yeah? Yeah, I enjoyed it. Where, where else did you go apart from uh, prayer? Did you go to a city? Did you go to Dhaka? Did you go to Silla? Did uh, you go to places to see around? Well, we just went and visited around relatives, really, and yeah, just... You know what? I don't know if you've been to Bangladesh uh, recently especially in Bangladesh in Eid day, now they're so loving, they're, they can be poor, there are some people who are very poor, but any house you go to, they will provide you something, they will not give to you, uh, say, I don't have it, whatever, even if they have a last chicken or last meat or last uh, samosas, they will give it to you, isn't it, that's how it is, yeah. it's unbelievable the love they have for us, yeah. and um, I haven't been to Bangladesh for 19 years, I'm sorry, I know, it's a bad example, but yes, I love to do it in Bangladesh, so I'm glad you enjoyed it. What would you say to young people, uh, like my kids, they haven't been to Bangladesh. Um, what would you say to them? Well, you should go there. There's a lot of family in Bangladesh that many people haven't met. It's good to get to know them, experience Bangladesh, like 
it's completely different from living here. They get to experience a whole new journey there as well. Fantastic. Uh, you did have a good time though, isn't it? I had a good time there, yeah. That's great. Um, Sadia, have you been to Bangladesh yourself? Uh, yeah, I've been three times. Um, when was the last time you The last time I went was two years ago. Have you done an Eid in Bangladesh? Yeah. Oh, please share your ideas about Eid and um, um, what kind of food you had and what did you wear and how was their reception for you? It would be interesting for our viewers. So, um, for that Eid, I had to wear um, an Indian dress. It's really uncomfortable. When you say Indian, what does it mean? Uh, Silver kameez? Say that again? S uh, Silver kameez. Silver okay, yeah. Um, so it was really hot, so it was particularly uncomfortable. But um, the atmosphere there is really nice. As you said, it's really loving. Um, we visited relatives and they were really excited. And everyone makes food and tars, and it's just really nice. What was the best food you had there? Um, something you know, tasty, you loved it, you can't forget it. I'm sure it's something special in don't the taste really of the food. I don't have favourites when it comes to food, I just like food. What was the reception like? You know, like um, in Bangladesh, when you go there, young people like you guys are, um, you pray. You dress up like a proper dress, an Islamic dress. In some places in Bangladesh, they don't wear like that. Mm. And they seem to think people in England or outside in Europe, they shouldn't be, oh, wow, are they religious? Are they like that? They, to them, it's like shocking. Yeah. So what was the tr wha how was their uh, feelings towards that? Um, well, in Bangladesh, they like their saris. They like their extravagant outfits. And on Eid, they were really surprised that I kept my headscarf on. And they were making jokes, asking if I actually have any hair. <laughs> okay, they open your legs. Okay, <laughs> you know, like great to have example like you. Honestly, this is this is what Islam is about. What you believe, you stick to it. And you know, this is the religion of truth. And you, you kept it. You know, that's the example. And now, I'm assuming a lot of people will take example from you, and they will wear. Out. I mean, for them, it's like funny. I mean, sometimes in Bangladesh, is some places not very religious, but when they, they expect us to be more non-religious, but when we go there like that, the tupon or dress code and stuff like that, they say, wow, that's amazing, that's amazing. Mazar, you have experience with Bangladesh, haven't you? No. Um, last like time. me, are you? Yeah, last time I went, I was five, so I can't really remember anything. Anything? No, not even a food, but it's very food, anything, nothing? Just lizards. Lizards, okay, that's there's something. pretty much it. Yeah, I think when you're five years, you don't get to see um, a lot of things. That's great. You know, when I was in Bangladesh, actually, I went to, uh, when I was, I'm going to share the, uh, it, ex you know, um, experience I had was, so I wake up in the morning, and um, especially in Bangladesh, especially your daddies and nannies, they will say, the earliest you can wake up is better for you, and you go and jump into the pond. Mm -hmm. Fushkuni, you know, yeah, in Fushkuni. Fushkuni. I don't know if you, you know what it is. Yeah. And, and imagine three o'clock in the morning, or four o'clock, it's so cold, man, you know? And then you uh, go there and you jump and you do swimming or you wash yourself up and get up. It was really hard, but th th that is what you usually say, if you do that, you get zam zam in that water. You know, they're just making it up, just to make you uh, going for, you know, just give like a, they bribe you actually, say that's a special water now, and you do that. And you go and get up, and I went to our relatives. You know, it's heartbreaking to see uh, we don't talk about them. You know, they genuinely love us. Honestly, they genuinely love. They have this feeling within themselves, like we are special to them. Sometimes maybe we are. We give them some kind of donations and stuff like that, and we look after them. But we don't deserve, you know, the love they show us. You know, I don't, I don't deserve that much, honestly. Almost I cried. Almost I cried. So I don't deserve that much. Sorry. They would say, please um, give me a hug or hold me. So no, no, I don't, I, I'm just a normal person like you guys. You know, don't give me all that stuff. Don't make me something special. Um, can I ask you something hard? I know there are a lot of young people, actually. Um, they're not good as you guys, honestly. You guys are very gentle. Um, they usually go on the eat, they hire a car. They end up dead. It happened in the in, in, in UK a lot. Last year, last, you know, two, day, two months ago, the it will fit the um, two people had to attempt to murder. They were, they were nicked in by 24, 25 years old. It was in the newspaper. And um, in Southampton, they couldn't do their prayer outside in the park. And the racist attack were uh, visible, could happen. They had to pick it up. So recent news is coming out now in the papers, like Muslims are not that good. Look at them. 
uh, Muslims are selling drugs, Muslims are having drugs on the day, they have a mm -hmm. lot of alcohol, it's got some young people into that. So why do you think they end up in like that? Why do you think, why do you think they do this? To be honest... Um, do you know anyone who does it? Don't say the name, but do you, th do you think it's happening? No, I don't know anyone. Okay, not in Birmingham then. Alhamdulillah, I've got a good, good, gr uh, good group. So. Okay, so your friends are having a bad... Do you think other people in Birmingham are doing it? You've got guns yeah, in Birmingham, uh, man. You've got, there's, there's got guns in Birmingham, you mm, know. Yeah, right. <laughs> they are actually, yeah. So what do you think we should do to stop that? That's not good at all for the community. I think, well, the way to stop As it... As a young person, I mean, I'll be very interested to know what we, we expect us to do. Well, it's, it's all about the, the, the crowd that you hang around with. I, I think that's a, a major factor to why they do certain things. And, um, yeah, if you... If you if you're with the wrong crowd, you, you're gonna end up, you know, doing what what they do. And uh, a way to for us to help them would be to, you know, I think it all comes down to to the parents really, and um, trying to to just uh, keep them off the off the streets and yeah. You know, a lot of people. I mean, off the record, a lot of people actually on that day, they do they taste a lot of bad things. Either they drink or drug, they taste on that day, eat day. That is so sad to see Muslims into that crowd. Yeah. And do you feel, as the elders, my age group, are we doing enough to stop them? I think the, the parents, you know, sometimes they don't know what their, the kids are, what they get up to on eat day. Um, you know, they, they spend time with the families and they go off with their friends, and yeah, um, parents don't have. I don't think they have any idea what their kids get up to. So. Why do you think is that? Why do you think parents are uh, laid back and they don't care? Or I'm sure they care, but they like don't they know their kids. Why do you think it's like that? Uh, no, no parent would want their kid to, you know, to do such a bad thing. But it's just, it's just down to them, really. Um, you know, end of the day, it's your, it's your sin, and yeah. Do you think is we have a communication problem with the kids? Do you think we, uh, our parents, have communication with the kids? They don't know the kids. They don't know who they. No, it's staying. not that. Do you think it's not that. You know, the parents do their best to to educate them, to to keep them safe, uh, to give them the best upbringing that they can. But you know, it's just all down to the to the kid kids in the end. Um, you know. Now, do you, would you like to touch that? Because you, you, I'm sure you know about a lot of young people are getting drunk. They're into having drugs. They buying, uh, hiring a car, and killing other people or killing themselves as well. We don't want this to happen. We don't want uh, our young people. Do you think it's, how do we stop them? Why, is th why are they doing up to this? Um, well, I think for many people, it's lost its essence. People just see it as an excuse to receive expensive gifts, to wear their best clothes. Of course, it is an excuse to wear your best clothes, but also to hire cars and drink and do drugs. Um, but they forget that it's all about family. But at the same time, um, I think, some parents don't realize how boring Eid can be for their kids. They just go around to their cousin's house, and that's not exciting for teenagers. You know what? That is really, really important what you said, actually. That is very true. We end up, like my kids were complaining, oh, do we have to go to the nanus? Or do we have to go to the uncles? We do that all year. Why are we going there today? Why don't we go somewhere else? And we came to say, no, we have to go because everyone's going there. You see what I mean, where I'm coming from? Everyone's going there. So what if everyone's going, to, going there? It's, your, it's about you and your kids as well. If, they wanna, if you want to give them something special, um, you've got to think differently. You've got to plan it out. Um, Shahid, I know you're young. I mean, um, do you get to hear, like in London, people are having crush or people are into bad things or into gangs? Do you get to hear these things in, in where you're from? Uh, in my area, I don't really get to hear. It's quite peace where there's, I don't hear much stories of bad things happening on Eid day because it's quite a peaceful and small community, but no, I've never heard of such things. Okay. Uh, you guys are lucky. You know, in, in, in Tarahanda, we have a lot of things happening like that. Um, Mazar wouldn't know. Mazar, we have a lot of gangs in, in, in Tarahanda, a lot of gangs. You know, um, we have a lot of bad guys and good guys too. Luckily, we have a lot of good guys. Uh, always the bad guys are, in, you know, showing that they are in the front line of everything. Why do you think people, your young people, end up in gangs, man? See, it's mainly it's about pressure. Like a lot of young people, they're pressured. Like they they see that their mates are chilling with other people that are involved in this gang and they're enjoying it, 
and their loving life. Some of them, obviously, they get involved in drugs, they become rich, now they're buying stuff they want, and it kind of appeals to them. So some people get in through that, and other people, it's they want a reputation for themselves, but they look for it not in the good ways, like you could volunteer, you could get yourself known in the good ways, but they look for it in like drugs. I'm going to be known with the big guys in the community, like the the dons, the gangsters, the guys that everyone looks up to, that that, that fears. And then yeah, they. It's just but don't they realize like you could do whatever you're going to do, a few years, and you're going to end up in jail, or you're going to be kicked out of your house. You know, the life is miserable, man, for them. Don't they realize that? I, mean, I think a lot of them. They realise, but they realise too late. So they've already been pulled in and then they realise and now they can't stop. Or if they do, it's going to be hard for them to stop because like, they've been doing it for so long. And like, some, a lot of people that are involved in this stuff, they don't have a lot of guidance either. So they don't have someone to tell them the consequences because like, the older people that are involved in it, they won't talk to them. They, they'll let them do what they want to do. Like, there's no real elderly figure to look up to, to talk to, for a lot of them. So that's why they go into stuff like that. Okay, we're just going to go for a small break. I'm going to come back to you yeah. because it's really important to know how young people think about how they've been approached. Has anyone approached them regarding this kind of things? And how, how do we um, give them advice to come out of these things? Because it is a cycle going on. It's just like peop pulling people in, peer pressures, stuff like that. Um, dear viewers, uh, we're just going to go for a small break uh, and we come back. And stay with us, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Eid Mubarak. Ikra Banglar Shakol Dorshok, Donar Pishtoposhok, Bigapondata, O Shubhanud Daider. Idul Adhar Shubhetcha. तीन दिन बैपी बोर्नील इधर योजने इक्रा बांग्ला शादी थकूं इक्रा बांग्ला पुनंगो इस्लामिक बांग्ला चैनल 